Hello Cobrats and welcome back to Let's Play Undertale. I'm Shrikelight Tamer. Last time we made it here to our so-called home. And this episode we're going to see exactly what Toriel is doing downstairs. We're just checking around things a little bit. Kid shoes, empty photo frames, really dusty. The armoire that I had to think about. The toys that don't interest us, even if they are cool. The water sausage, the potted plants that don't even bother telling me about themselves. This chair, a small chair. His name is Cheriel. Yeah, a few things I didn't really read. Definitely bigger than a twin-sized bed. Well, Toriel is definitely bigger than twins herself. It's not a fat joke, it's just the size of her goatliness. Anyway, enough talking about all of this stuff. Checked out a few extra things. Let's just go to the main lobby of this house, I guess. Check this little bookshelf. These books are worn. They must have been read many times. Yep, Toriel is quite the reader because she wants to be a teacher. But for now, kind of done in the upstairs, let's go to the downstairs portion, where Toriel seems to have gone off to. You wish to know how to return home, do you not? Ahead of us lies the end of the ruins. A one-way exit to the rest of the underground. I'm going to destroy it. No one will ever be able to leave again. Now be a good child and go upstairs. She's moving along, and we could go upstairs if we want to. But we're not going to. Let's continue this way. Hope it's not going to be too much. Every human that falls down here meets the same fate. I have seen it again and again. They come. They leave. They die. You naive child. If you leave the ruins, they, Asgore, will kill you. I am only protecting you, do you understand? Go to your room. I understand the consequences. Let's press on anyway. Do not try to stop me. This is your final warning. I have been warned, and I shall not heed. You want to leave so badly? Hmm. <laughs> you are just like the others. There is only one solution to this. Prove yourself. Prove to me you are strong enough to survive. Yes, this is happening. Toria blocks the way. Let's go ahead and start this battle off with her. The song is called Heartache. And let's check her out. She has 80 attack and 80 defense, and knows best for you. My volume is kind of loud, so I might have to uh, tone it down for a second. I might have to bring it up in editing, because I'm recording things from the PC, of course, obviously. Anyway, let's get out of that. <laughs> I have attempted to record this episode before, and uh, it was kind of slow, and I lost my commentary to it as well, so I had to reset things up a little bit in a certain way. Toriel is preparing a magical attack. So obviously we don't really want to fight her, it would be a little bit too much to bring down someone that took us in as our mother. Let's talk to her. You can think of any conversation topics. And sorry to break any tension that may be happening, but if you look at her uh, nose and mouth, it looks like a very unimpressed face, even though she, she's looking pretty unimpressed overall. And she's taking a deep breath. Let's try talking to her again. I tried to think of something to say again, but it didn't quite happen. Watch out for the flames, just be careful because she can do a little bit of damage to you, especially if you're not going to be leveling up through a little pacifist run. Try talking again. Ironically, talking does not seem to be the solution to this situation. Well, we seem to have exhausted our options in the way of trying to talk our way out of it. Let's just see if we can spare her and not have to do this fight. Doesn't want to say much, but we're going to see that things are going to be changing up as we go along. Hopefully I'm not going to have to heal, there's going to be a certain point of the fight where things wouldn't be too bad. Two sets of ellipses. See, we are going somewhere. <laughs> it's kind of hard to dodge that attack. Okay, I'm at 1 HP, so I should probably heal up. I don't want to use the butterscotch pie, I want to wait for later on. Use our monster candy, 10 HP healed. You could have picked up another one, but it would have been like, how disgusting that you pick up more than one. Toriel was through you. Now for three sets of ellipses. Watch out for the flames swinging around my way. I'm on my way from misery to happiness today. Preparing a magical attack. Now question mark. After the ellipses. Ooh, man. I'm not really doing the greatest at dodging these attacks. They're kind of all over the place, and there are much more difficult enemies later on. What are you doing? Ooh, man. She slapped him with her hand. She used pound attack. So strong early on in the game, especially if she's gonna be like a normal type. Maybe she's like normal fairy or something. Fight or run away. Now she's 
doing these attacks again. And she is acting aloof. Let's keep up the sparing thing. What are you proving this way? I'm proving that I care. I do not want to have to fight you if I don't need to. She's taking a deep breath. Let's keep this up. Fight me or leave. And then, at this point, we're going to see that the attacks aren't coming our way. And her face is getting more, more deteriorated. She's starting to see right through me how things are going. Stop it. Just sit here. Nothing's hitting me. We're getting through this. Let's just keep going. Stop looking at me that way. Just chill here. I'm on the verge of death, so... <laughs> She doesn't want to bring me to death all the way. Go away! Just sit right here. Wait for things to happen. Just keep all this stuff up. Not talking, eh? Well, I'll get you talking once we keep on trying to spare you. Slowly get more sad faced with the second set of ellipses, like the second stage of the fight once she stops actually attacking you. I know you want to go home, but... But, please, go upstairs now. I promise I will take good care of you here. I know we do not have much, but... We can have a good life here. Why are you making this so difficult? Please, go upstairs. The nostrils and mouth were looking more sad. Haha. <laughs> now they're back to happy mode. Pathetic, is it not? I cannot save even a single child. No, I understand. You would just be unhappy trapped down here. The ruins are very small once you get used to them. It would not be right for you to grow up in a place like this. My expectations, my loneliness, my fear. For you, my child, I will put them aside. And that ends the fight. If you truly wish to leave the ruins, I will not stop you. However, when you leave, please do not come back. I hope you understand. A farewell hug, very heartfelt, after the heartache of a battle. Goodbye, my child. She stops to look back, but we do not because we have a job to do. Let's go through this door, go beyond the ruins, and see what awaits us. A very long corridor to go through. Starts a little bit dark, then it gets a little bit lighter, then a little bit lighter again. And at the lightest point, we will soon be seeing a doorway to the beyond. Clever. Very clever. You think you're really smart, don't you? In this world, it's kill or be killed. So you were able to play by your own rules. You spared the life of a single person. Hehehe. <laughs> I bet you feel really great. You didn't kill anybody this time. But what will you do with me, the relentless killer? You'll die, and you'll die, and you'll die. Until you tire of trying. What will you do then? Will you kill out of frustration? Or will you give up entirely on this world? and let me inherit the power to control it. I am the prince of this world's future. Don't worry, my little monarch, my plan isn't regicide. This is so much more interesting. <laughs> A little creepy this flowy individual is. I don't want to step on that little thing, even though it might kind of slow things down for him. Alas, let's continue and formally get out of the ruins, and formally start Undertale. A game by Toby Fox. You guys already know I'm Triclight Tamer, but that would be the point where the demo would end. It's decently long, about 45 minutes, depending on how fast you go and if you actually stop to read all the text. And we come out in a snowy, woodsy area. Just gonna have to see what's going on here. Continue along this quiet road with a single branch on the way. Check it out. It's a tough looking branch. It's too heavy to pick up. Well, I mean, we're equipped with a stick anyway, and also the toy knife that we found. And the branch has broken. Maybe we're just that strong for 
not being a killer. Ooh, seems to be a shadowy figure. Let's pay it no heed. Continue along and hope it doesn't become a problem for us. Come up on a little bridge with a gate over it. Very precariously placed. And the figure is approaching us. Human. Don't you know how to greet a new pal? Turn around and shake my hand. Are we sure about this? Okay, I guess we will. <laughs> the old whoopee cushion in the hand trick. It's always funny. Anyways, you're a human, right? That's hilarious. I'm Sans. Sans the Skeleton. I'm actually supposed to be on watch for humans right now. But, you know, I don't really care about capturing anybody. Now my brother, Papyrus. He is a human hunting fanatic. Hey, actually, I think that's him over there. I have an idea. Go through the skate thingy. Yeah, go right through. My bro made the bars too wide to stop anyone. Well, that's good. Quick, behind that conveniently shaped lamp. Walk rather slowly to it, but we're just like, okay, we'll just deal with this. Sup, bro? You know what's up, brother? It's been eight days and you still haven't recalibrated your puzzles. You just hang around outside your station. What are you even doing? Staring at this lamp. It's really cool. Do you want to look? No, I don't have time for that. But if a human comes through here, I want to be ready. I will be the one. I must be the one. I will capture a human. Then I, the Great Papyrus, will get all the things I utterly deserve. Respect. Recognition. I will finally be able to join the Royal Guard. People will ask to be my friend? I will bathe in a shower of kisses every morning. Hmm. Maybe this lamp will help you. Sans, you are not helping, you lazy bones. All you do is sit and boondoggle. You get lazier and lazier every day. Hey, take it easy. I've gotten a ton of work done today. A skeleton. That's a skeleton. Sans? Come on, you're smiling. I am, and I hate it. Ah, <sighs> why does someone as great as me have to do so much just to get some recognition? Wow, sounds like you're really working yourself. Down to the bone. Ugh! I will attend to my puzzles. As for your work, put a little more backbone into it. Yeah! <laughs> Heh. Okay, you can come out now. Alright. That was the thing that happened. Let's talk to him. You wanna get going, he might come back, and if he does, you'll have to sit through more of my hilarious jokes. Oh no, how will they ever handle that? Just a conveniently shaped lamp. And this little checkpoint or sentry station of sorts. But there are bottles of ketchup, mustard, and relish sitting inside. Alright, maybe hot dog stand or something, I don't know. Actually, hey, hate to bother you, but can you do me a favor? I was thinking, my brother's been kind of down lately. He's never seen a human before, and seeing you might just make his day. Don't worry, he's not dangerous. Even if he tries to be. Thanks a million. I'll be up ahead. Alrighty, Sans. Now this music is the start. We are in an area known as Snowden, and this little checkpoint of saving would be known as the Boss Road. Can't really save to show the things stuff, but it's gonna see that the convenience of the lamp still fills you with determination. Alrighty. Not gonna save. In the case of things messing up, there's a boss over there, but we're gonna be getting to a battle now. Got a snow drake looking kind of scary, but it's still a basic enemy. If you look at its nostrils and mouth, it still looks like a funny face down below. It has six attack and two defense. This teen comedian fights to keep captive audience. Mm -mm -mm, macaroni and freeze. He's trying to make a pun. Watch out for the attacks. It's like he's using razor wind on me. Realize its own name is a pun and it's freaking out. Let's laugh about it. He left Snow Drake's pun. See? Laughs! That was wrong! Let's watch out for the things that are coming my way. I even know they hit me. It's pleased with this cool joke. 
and once it feels content that you have laughed at its joke, you're able to spare it. If you do otherwise, they would be like, why are you laughing at me before I said anything funny? And that's pretty cool that you get 12 gold out of it, haha, <laughs> cool, snow puns. This is a box, you can put an item inside to take an item out. The same box will appear later, so don't worry about coming back. Sincerely, a box lover. Alrighty, let's use the box. Uh, we can put in the stick and the butterscotch pie, but I'll keep it in hand for now. You can only have so many items at one time. So yep, let's just go north briefly because there's a little something. A Russian river and a pole with no attendee person. It's a fishing rod affixed to the ground. Reel it in? Yeah, let's reel this thing in. All that's attached to the end is a photo of a weird looking monster. Call me, here's my number. You decide not to call. Ooh. Savagery to not call the numbers, maybe. And it looks like a little happy nap split ghost. I don't know. This is what it looks like to me. A Rorschach kind of pattern. Not gonna save. <laughs> I almost dead out of instinct. Team instinct. Anyway, let's get into another battle with another enemy. Ice cap struts into view. Let's check you. Seven attack and two defense. Another teen that wonders why it isn't named Ice Hat. Your head looks so naked. And it's gonna be using these transverse longitudinal waves. I never really got a grip of how each one of those things worked. Alright, let's uh, ignore you about your hat. You managed to tear your eyes away from Ice Cap's hat, even if it's so cool. It looks annoyed. Hello, my hat's up here. And here we go, let's use this attack again. It'd be fun if it went more speedy. Secretly checking if you're looking at his hat. No, we're still ignoring you. Let's continue not looking at the Ice Cap's hat. It seems defeated. Okay, I'll ignore you too. Oh no, he's using a warp pipe, it turns red, and the spiked things jump out. It's like Ice Cap Zone from Sonic, because those things look like the spikes that you'd be able to run into. It's desperate for attention. And, uh, let's steal the thing, because it's off guard. Oh no, it turned into straight up ice. That's kind of sad. So, cold. Ice Cap is no more. Let's compliment you. You inform Ice Cap that it still looks fine. So it can still impress you? Yep, this is just, uh thing you can do, it doesn't mind its identity, and you can spare it at this point, but all you really need to do is just do the ignore option two times, and then you can spare. And that's the complication of all the fighting, how's my health, uh, I can still continue along. And here are the Skeleton Brothers right here. So, as I was saying about Undyne, they catch sight of me. Faster and faster they go! Sans? Oh my god! Is that... a human? Uh... Actually, I think that's a rock. Oh. Hey, what's that in front of the rock? Oh my god! Is... is that a human? Yes. Oh my god! Sans, I finally did it! Undyne will... I'm gonna... I'll be so... Popular! 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 Ahem! Human, you shall not pass this area. I, the Great Papyrus, will stop you. I will then capture you. You will be delivered to the capital. Then, then... I'm not sure what's next. In any case, continue. Only if you dare. <laughs> well, that went well. Well, it went well indeed. Don't sweat it, kid. I'll keep an eye socket out for you. And you're somehow closing it. Oh well, I guess you're an anthropomorphous skeleton. Yep, I want to go back and heal in case there will be more difficult fights coming my way. And the convenience of the lamp still does fill me with determination. All healed up on health, and we got another fight coming up. Let's just do the thing with this ice cap where we ignore, tell your, your eyes away, it looks annoyed, hello, my hat is up here, blah blah blah. Yep, I ended that fight and went to heal up again because I needed to. We're being called. Hey, is your refrigerator running? Yes, no. Uh, yes. Nice. I'll be over to deposit the Brewskies. At least he didn't tell me to go catch it. Click. What's this over here? I don't know. We're gonna have to fight this ice cap first. Better a hatter than a hater. I guess those are indeed words to live by. Out of that fight, there's some narration on this cardboard box. You observed the well-crafted sentry station. Who could have built this, you ponder? I bet it was that very famous royal guardsman. No, I got a very famous Royal Guardsman. Oh well. One can only assume that was built by Papyrus. Absolutely no moving! 
Alright, let's just continue moving along. Uh-oh. Did something move? Was it my imagination? I can only see moving things. If something was moving, for example, a human, I'll make sure it never moves again. And then we fight this. Doggo blots the way, so yep, this is kind of a source for a lot of memes having to do with doggos and puppers, and it looks like it's scratching its back with that knife. Must be rather dull compared to the other one that does seem kind of sharp, so I don't know. Let's check this thing. Six attack, one defense, easily excited by movement. Hobbies include squirrels. Don't move an inch. So yeah, this is kind of here as a tutorial. If you see things coming your way that are blue, if you don't move, it won't hurt you. Doggo can't seem to find anything. Uh, let's pet it, even though we're not supposed to be moving. You pet Doggo. What? I've been pet. 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 Doggo has been pet. He does a bork. Seems happy. Let's spare him. You won. Zero XP. 30 gold. So, so something pet me. Something that isn't mm, moving. I'm going to need some dog treats for this. Alright, pretty much done there, but let's go ahead and ring the bell right there. Surprise, it's a bomb! Nah, just kidding. Hello, is anybody there? No? Well, it wasn't moving because you have to be moving yourself in the text box stuff. Here's some dog bones here. Someone's been smoking dog treats. Ooh, that's not good for your health. Let's continue along, and Sans is right here. Hey, there's something important to remember. My brother has a very special attack. If you see a blue attack, don't move and it won't hurt you. Here's an easy way to keep it in mind. Imagine a stop sign. When you see a stop sign, you stop, right? Stop signs are red, so imagine a blue stop sign instead. Simple, right? When fighting, think about blue stop signs. Even though that bit of text was yellow, it's so confusing with all these primary colors. So confusing that I'm gonna have to end off this episode of Let's Play Undertale. Until next time where we continue along the road to Snowden Town, possibly seeing some of Papyrus's puzzles, alliteration, don't toast yourself.